Everyone thinks he is a loser without any magic power, but he turns out to be the strongest exorcist from another world. Sika was once the greatest exorcist in Japan, who turned many ghosts and demons into his servants using his unparalleled command over the spiritual arts. With his powerful servants, he faced off against any supernatural threat the world faced. However, the government feared his immense power, so they took his students hostage and defeated him in an unfair fight. On his deathbed, Sika realized that he spent all his life trying to become the strongest, but was defeated by corrupt rulers in the end. He intended to start his life over, but since Truk Khan was not invented at that time, he educated himself using a spell determined to live a better life. He was reborn into a world of magic and monsters as Sika Lamprouge, the third son of a noble family that was known for producing quality mages. He has only heard that his mom was his dad's side chick, but that is not the truth, as he is the son of the family head's deceased younger brother. Only his uncle Robert, who pretends to be his dad, knows this and Sika has no idea about this. When Sika turns five, Robert conducts a ritual to determine his magic power and finds that it is equal to the number of girlfriends I have. He may have zero magic power, but he does not mind it as he still commands the tremendous spiritual power he had in his previous life. One day, he uses leaves as his talismans and transforms them into rats and crows to test his spiritual power. Just then, his elder brother Gly, a Dutch bag in the making, comes there to insult and bully him. As he is about to hit Sika for no reason, he summons his crow servants to attack Gly, and the timid eldest brother, Luft, comes to shoo off the crows. Luft is suspicious of Sika because he was not attacked by the crows, but he keeps his doubts to himself. As time passes, Sika keeps working by himself to create paper so that he can create proper paper dolls that are the base of his spells. His only friend in the house is a servant girl named Yifa, who always finds an excuse to come to him. Gly still pesters him and he never forgets to show off his magic abilities in front of his loser younger brother. He declares that since he has talent unlike Sika, he will go to the Imperial Magic Academy. But just then, Robert comes and takes him to the magic training lesson. Sika sees a chance and asks his father to join the training session and despite his lack of magic, he is allowed to take part in it. Luff and Gly practice wind and fire magic on rocks and Gly taunts Sika to try his hand because their dad is watching. Sika did not want to show off his power, but he does not want to be bullied for his entire life either, so he takes Gly's magic wand, uses spiritual arts to manipulate the elements around him, and shoots a powerful blue fireball that astonishes his brothers and dad. His dad claims that there are cases where people born without magic power can use spells and the color of flames is just a property of an individual's power. Robert refuses Sika's request to be taught magic, but he grants him a private tutor who will help him with his overall studies. Sika decides learning more things about this world will be a better thing for him right now, so he studies hard and uses his paper dolls to spy on his brother's training. Years pass, and when Sika turns 11, he decides to summon one of the many demons he had defeated and enslaved in his previous life. Because he sealed them in a parallel dimension, he is confident that he can call them in this world too. For his first summons, Sika picks up the least threatening of his servants, Yuki, the mystical white fox. She appears in her human form and immediately clings to Sika, saying that she missed him a lot, but he needs to verify if she really is Yuki, because she used to be a beautiful woman in the past. They both realize that because his powers are not complete here, Yuki has been turned into a lowly. Sika wants to send her back as this was just a trial run, but she is tired of the parallel dimension, so she turns into a fox to live alongside him. One day, Sika finds Gly trying to force Yifa to come to his bed at night, but he defends the girl, saying she is his servant. Gly punches him, but Sika blocks his fist and forces him to retreat. Yifa thanks Sika, and then she asks him to come with her to help an injured monster cub she found. Sika asks her to look to the other side, claiming he can't concentrate while being watched, and then uses his spiritual arts to heal the cub's injuries in an instant. Yifa praises Sika, but he says that she is also something special because he has often found her looking at the souls of animals. Yifa is taken aback to learn that he can see them too, and she decides to tell him her secret. She claims that she can see elemental spirits, who seem to love Sika's things but avoid him like girls avoid me. Sika is surprised to hear about her special ability, and after he confirms that Yifa can command the spirits, he gets a brilliant idea. He asks her if she is willing to learn magic, and when she says she doesn't have enough magic power for that, he tells her about an alternate way. He summons a fire spirit and asks her to make it disappear. After trying for several minutes, Yifa commands the fire spirit to disappear and Sika realizes he is a good subordinate now. He helps her train over the months and she gets better at controlling the spirits. Soon, Sika turns 12, but his father is not even home for his birthday, just like my father was never there for me. Later, his brothers tell him to come and practice sword fighting with him because the only career option for him is going to the army, 
as he could neither be a lord nor a mage. Just then, two maids inform them that a giant monster is heading towards the mansion. Sika senses the monster before anyone else, and as the giant salamander monster appears there, Glee pisses his pants and runs away. Luff takes charge and commands everyone to take shelter, even though he is terrified. But Sika heads straight towards the monster, who is about to attack Yifa. Before Sika can even help her, Yifa subconsciously commands a fire spirit to help her, and he is impressed. After that, he lures the monster out into the open, where he defeats it using a poison magic spell. Everyone starts clapping for him, and Sika greets them realizing that everything went just like he planned. Robert arrives at the mansion just then and treats Sika to a lavish dinner at night for defeating the salamander. He asks Sika what he wants for his birthday present, and he asks him to let him enroll in the Imperial Magic Academy. Despite the resistance of the jealous Gly, his dad allows Sika to take the entrance test. Sika has one more request, and that is to take Yifa as his servant to the Magic Academy. Yifa panics and even Robert says that she can't go to the Academy as she has no talent for magic. Sika promises to prove him wrong and takes her to the window, where he asks her to use the spirits and create the greatest fireball she can if she wants to come with him to the academy. Yifa is a simp, and to go with her crush, she uses the help of fire spirits and launches a mid-rank fireball, shocking everyone. Robert accepts to send Yifa along with Sika to the academy and then tells Gly that he won't be sent to the magic academy now and that he has to join the army. Glee is frustrated and challenges Sika to a duel for the right to determine who will go to the magic academy. Sika accepts the challenge, and Robert declares that it will take place at noon tomorrow, and using lethal force is forbidden. At night, Luft visits Sika to wish him a happy birthday and gives him an expensive pen. He claims that he never had the courage to talk to him properly, but now he feels he should have been kinder to his youngest brother. Luft asks Sika to go easy on Gly tomorrow, and he promises to do that. However, Bly has no intention to wait till tomorrow, and he sends a blast of wind magic at Sika's window to challenge him for a duel right away. Sika goes downstairs where Gly declares that he won't let him go to the Magic Academy at any cost, because he believes that Sika got lucky with the monster. Gly uses a fire tornado spell on Sika, but doesn't do even a little bit of damage, and when Gly attacks him with wind magic, Sika blocks it with a barrier. As Gly keeps on blasting spells in him, Sika takes out a paper doll and binds his brother with it. He uses his spiritual arts to paralyze Gly and then twists his arm so that he has no choice but to surrender to escape from the terrible pain. As Gly faints, Sika wants to tell him that his victory over the monster was not a coincidence. The truth was that he had put things in motion six months ago when he summoned the Cyclops demon and commanded him to lure the Salamander to the mansion. He had already researched the weakness of the Salamander, and everything went exactly according to his plan. Yuki asks Sika why he has to be so shady when he is so powerful, and he replies that he doesn't want to stand out too much in this life because he paid the price for his fame in the previous one. Soon Spring arrives and Sika heads to the academy along with Ifa, where he realizes that his new body has motion sickness. He is exhausted by the time he reaches his inn, and Ifa comforts him. She has been thirsting after him for quite some time and wants to come to his bed tonight, but Sika is dumb as a brick, so he doesn't understand her advances. The next day, they go to the academy for the entrance test, where the examiner asks them to place their hand on the magic crystal to get their aptitudes checked. Yifa turns out to have an affinity for fire and wind magic, but Sika looks like a loser in front of everyone because he doesn't have any magic. As other students gossip about him getting into the academy just because of his dad's money, a girl angrily silences everyone as she moves to the examiner. Sika seems to recognize the girl who introduces herself as Amy, a commoner with a high affinity for all four elements, as Amy leaves after getting herself evaluated, Sika thinks that she looks like his dearest disciple from his previous life. After that, Sika gives his written exam, and then it is time for the practical exam. Students have to hit stone targets with their best magic spells to display their power, and Sika finds that most losers here can only use one element, and that too quite poorly. Soon, Yifa's turn comes, and she destroys the targets with fire and wind magic. Sika is also surprised that she develops so much without him knowing and her progress brings tears to his eyes. Up next is his turn and he uses the blue fireball to set the first target on fire before going to the second one and destroying it by manifesting metallic cubes out of thin air. He then freezes the third target with ice magic and claims that this is all he can do. Everyone is shocked that someone without magic can do this, but later, Amy stuns everyone because she can use four basic elements, plus the advanced light and dark elements too. The results are declared the next day, and while Yifa is nervous that she might fail, she places second on the merit list, beating Sika, who is third. Amy is the topper, and Sika picks her as his next target determined to be his subordinate. 
Assuming they officially enroll in the academy and on the very first day, Sika notices something is off. He asks Yifa if there are any spirits nearby, and she points out that there are many dark spirits wandering around. Sika follows his gut and finds a creepy magic circle carved on the ground. He suggests that it might be some school experiment and tells Yifa they should not investigate it further, but leaves some of his paper dolls to spy over the area. Later, as Amy gives her speech as the honor student, Sika notices that the creepy magic circle has been activated, and shortly after that, three lesser demons crash their enrollment party. Everyone panics, but Sika calmly observes the demons to find their objective. The teachers engage the demons in battle, but it is useless, and one of them is about to get crushed when Amy attacks the demon to save her. Sika thinks that the demons are too slow to be the main attack force, and he uses his spy dolls to find the demon activating the magic circle. He informs Yifa that he has an urgent chore to do and leaves to face the demon. He approaches the demon, asking him the reason he was attacking the school, but the demon doesn't bother to answer and summons his minions to attack him. Sika destroys two of the demons with his spiritual arts and then seals the third one in a parallel dimension. The boss demon decides to face him head-on and summons multiple swords to fight him. Sika uses his paper dolls to attack him with fire, but the demon can see them even though they are invisible and counters them with magic. The demon then claims it is his turn to counterattack, and he throws his sword at Sika, who dodges it but gets hit when the demon teleports the blade to attack him from behind. The demon then uses a fire slash, and as Sika dodges it, he appears behind him and delivers a critical blow that cuts away his arm. The demon is impressed that a human boy can hold his ground against him, so he tells him that the reason he attacked the academy is because of the hero. He laughs as he declares that Amy is the hero, and he plans to finish her soon. Sika is taken aback as he hears this, and the demon launches a barrage of swords at him to finish him off and takes off his head. As the demon leaves to face the hero, Sika suddenly appears again, singing a song about being the strongest. The demon attacks him again, but his attacks seem to have no effect on Sika, who tells him that true power does not lie in individual strength, but in the craftiness to control that power well. The demon summons hundreds of blades, well, I'm exaggerating for dramatic effect, and declares he will go all out now. Sika dodges all the swords and then uses water magic to flood the entire area. The demon teleports to the sky and attacks Sika from above, but he dodges and summons a lightning opossum to Pikachu the crap out of him. The demon takes the hit and then appears behind Sika, turning him into a human donut. However, Sika was waiting to be hit and uses a self-destruct spell that deals serious damage to his enemy. Immediately after the explosion, Sika changes places with one of his paper dolls, which took all the damage from the previous attacks. The demon realizes his trick and says he must be running low on his dolls, but Sika shows him that there are more where they came from. He decides to put an end to their fight and summons one of his more powerful summons, which is sealed behind many doors. A dragon appears behind the doors, and the demon is flabbergasted because not even the demon lord can summon a dragon. On Sika's command, the dragon attacks the demon and takes him to the sky before swallowing him whole. Sika then asks the dragon to return to him, but he tries to get away from his control. He sends his paper dolls to force him to change his way, and as the dragon rushes to attack him, Sika opens the door to the parallel dimension and seals him again, before concluding that his spiritual power has not properly synced with his body, which is why the dragon tried to rubble. Soon after that, Sika returns to the academy where he finds that Amy has defeated all the lesser demons on her own. As he looks at her and then at the other students, he feels that the strong will eventually be dragged down and crushed by the weak. He does not want to be the strongest in this life, but he thinks that if he sets the hero Amy as the strongest human, he will not be targeted. Sticka decides to befriend the girl and then make her the strongest human, thinking that even if she is crushed, he won't mind it as long as he gets to be happy. However, Amy gives him the cold shoulder even after a few months pass, making him realize that he doesn't have what it takes to make friends. One day, as Sika and Yifa are going to their class, a huge jar containing a foul-smelling chemical falls on them. Sika quickly teleports away from the chemical and wonders what it is when the nerdy teacher apologizes for the accident. He claims that the chemical is used in his research and has monster blood combined with various herbs, but as he was trying to levitate it using magic, his hand slipped and it fell down. Later, the homeroom teacher tells them that the top two students, Amy and Yifa, will participate in a ritual and go to the forest to offer their prayers to a temple there. Sika feels that it might be dangerous for the girls to go there on their own, so he orders Yifa to hand over her position to him, and she does that reluctantly. While everyone, including the teacher, calls him a scumbag for misusing his privileges, Sika doesn't care. Later, he apologizes for taking the chance from Yifa and says that he wants to look out for Amy, since she must have attracted some undue attention after she slayed all the demons earlier.
He says he wants to be friends with her because she is strong and Nifa feels insecure that her master is paying another girl more attention than her. Stika assures her that she is his best girl and Nifa is content with hearing that. Tired of watching anime on your phone or laptop screen? Well, I've just leveled up my anime watching experience from a small monitor to an epic 130-inch display with this incredible mini-flix projector. It's literally like having a personal theater. Packed with built-in apps like YouTube, Crunchyroll, Netflix, it's every anime lover's dream come true. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link below to learn more and use the code ANIME to get 20% off your first order. Back to the video. Soon the day of the ritual arrives and Amy asks Siko why he was so insistent on coming with her. She asks him if his servant was not enough to satisfy his carnal desires and that is why he wants to hit on a classmate now. Sika says it is nothing like that when suddenly Amy feels a sharp pain in her head. Stika investigates and finds that there is a magic circle nearby, which seems to be the cause of Amy's headache. Just as she comes near it, the magic circle activates and instantly teleports them inside an underground dungeon. Before they can even realize what is happening, some lizard-like monsters attack them, but Amy moves quickly and defeats them in an instant. As she acts high and mighty while Sika praises her, another monster attacks her from behind and Sika impales it with a wooden stake just in time. Amy says that being teleported inside a dungeon like this is very dangerous, and their chances of survival are low, but she is hopeful that the two of them can stay alive till help comes. As they explore the dungeon to find an exit, Sika sticks his paper dolls to the roof to mark the route, and also calls the servants he has transformed into bees outside to help them find an exit. Soon, a bunch of monsters attack them, Amy rushes headfirst to challenge them. She manages to take down a few of them, but an injured monster refuses to die and hits her hard. Amy is on the ground and Sika rushes to her aid, defeating all the monsters in his way using wooden spikes. As soon as he sees Amy losing consciousness, he summons the giant centipede to make quick work of all the remaining monsters. Amy soon wakes up and finds that Sika has healed her injuries. She still gets bouts of her headache and Sika sets up a barrier that immediately puts her at ease. He claims that she is getting the headache because of a curse, and Amy claims it is impossible because she never saw a curse mark on her body. Sika replies that there are places where she cannot see herself and she thinks he is a pervert who wants to see her body. However, she herself is a bit of a pervert and takes off her clothes so that he can find if there is a curse mark on her back. Sika finds nothing, but he claims that there are other ways to curse someone. He then asks Amy for a strand of her hair and ties it around a paper doll that will absorb the curse in her place for the time being. After that, she asks him about his abilities, but Sika gives her no clear answers. Amy talks about the lewd stuff with him, but finds that he is a boar who can't understand that Yifa is practically throwing herself at him. Stika decides to change the topic and asks her about herself, and Amy reveals that both her parents are adventurers and she enjoys fighting. She claims to not feel the fear of injuries and death, and that is why the people around her always thought she was weird. She says that she wants to grow stronger at this academy so that the act of fighting might turn boring for her, and she might become normal that way. She asks Stika if he also thinks she's a weirdo, but he replies that he feels she has her place in the world like everyone else. His words raise her up and she thanks him for not judging her after hearing her story. After that, they resume their exploration and defeat hordes of monsters before reaching the boss room. Amy finds that it is a serpentine monster and claims it is not wise to face it, but Sika says that they can win if they fight together. She decides to put her faith in him and they rush into the boss's room. Sika attacks the boss with wooden spikes, but they have no effect and the monster spits acid at him. Sika dodges the attack and Amy attacks the monster from behind, but her magic also fails to make a dent. Sika soon finds a chance, impales the monster's mouth with a golden nail, and asks Amy to use a fireball on it. She does as she is told and the golden nail absorbs all the heat to explode, weakening the monster enough to give Amy the chance to finish it. She is overjoyed at defeating the boss and hugs Sika, claiming that their teamwork was flawless. He praises her and tells her that she is strong before moving on to the dungeon clear rewards. Sika finds a mithril sword embedded in a demon hand and gives it to Amy since it will suit her. Just then, a magic ring falls to the ground and he decides to keep it as his reward. He says that it was fun being an adventurer and asks Amy to go on another adventure with him later, and she gladly agrees to that. Soon, they find the exit and return to school, where they inform the teachers about the dungeon. The magic circle that teleported them in had vanished by then, so no one could find out the culprit behind that, but Sika has already discovered him. He goes straight to the nerdy teacher and confronts him about the curse he put on Amy. The teacher asks him how he learned about it, and Sika lists 13 reasons why he thought the teacher was working for demons. He has figured out that the teacher helped the demons infiltrate the school, and he also teleported him and Amy inside the dungeon. He asks him to show his real form, but the man laughs as he says that he is a human, who works for demons as a spy. 
Sika hails the man as a genius because he created a new spell to curse someone from a distance and kill them slowly while leaving no trace. The teacher is flattered, but he says that Sika will have to die because he learned his secrets. However, Sika tells him that he is cursing a paper doll instead of Amy right now because the teacher has set the target of his curse as anyone who is tainted with human blood. The teacher is stunned, and then Sika summons the demon he had stashed away and bathes in its blood to take the curse on himself. Then he prays to the god of hell to transfer the curse to its caster, and the curse hits the teacher like Truk Kun, making him bleed from all holes. The teacher loses too much blood and dies. Sika praises his work on researching curses, but claims that he has nothing on the world's strongest exorcist when it comes to dealing with curses. Soon after that, Sika gifts the ring he found in the dungeon to Yifa, because it can boost her connection with the spirits and she is happy to receive it. Just then, Amy passes by and she gives Sika the same cold treatment despite everything that happened in the dungeon. She is quite friendly with Yifa and Sika wonders what he did wrong. They eventually hit a long well and soon Sika and his friends reach the second year of their school life. Sika has been monitoring the entire academy campus, but there have been no demon or assassin attacks ever since he dealt with the teacher. Suddenly, the vice principal approaches them and asks Sika and Yifa to visit the principal the next day and he gets a bad feeling about it. He visits the principal the next day and finds that she is a dwarf who takes offense to being called a demi-human. She thinks that Sika's attitude is similar to that of his uncle, who was once a student at the academy, but Sika is hearing about his dad's brother for the first time. The principal quickly moves to the main topic and tells Sika that he has to take part in the combat tournament being held in the competition along with a new student. A red-headed girl enters the office on the principal's queue and introduces herself as Mabel Crane. The principal says that they have only two slots and Mabel will take one of them, while she wants Sika to take the other. When Amy learns of this, she's furious that she wasn't invited despite being the top student, but Sika has a theory about it and he wants to test out. Amy is still disappointed about being neglected, even though she doesn't like the idea of participating in the tournament. She bitches about Mabel being related to some noble who pulled strings to let her join the tournament just to boost her resume. Amy says that the girl must be a spoiled brat who doesn't know shit about the real world, and just then, Mabel comes there and throws the same words at her. Amy confronts Mabel, who says that she wasn't chosen for the tournament simply because she was too weak. Amy takes this as a challenge and borrows practice swords from some students to challenge redhead number two for a duel. On Sika's signal, Amy rushes towards Mabel, who blocks her attack by strengthening her sword with dark magic. She matches Amy equally and then disarms her with one powerful blow. Mabel taunts her, calling her the spoilt little hero and Amy calls her a cheater for using magic in a sword fight. Mabel replies that she can't afford to complain like that in the real world before leaving. She also warns Sika to forfeit if he's not serious about the tournament because he's going to end up hurt. He puts on a forced smile as Mabel leaves and then goes to help Amy up, who has decided to accompany Sika and Mabel to the tournament to see them fight there. In the carriage, Amy and Yifa keep chatting and Mabel says they are all sheltered kids. Sika is getting tired of her emo act, but he decides to mind his own business. As soon as they reach the capital, Sika is in terrible shape because of his motion sickness, but he still insists on going to the arena to find out who his opponent is. He finds that if he and Mabel keep winning, they will fight in the semis, but apart from that, there is nothing worth noting. He asks Yifa and Amy to explore the city while he gets some rest, but then he uses his paper dolls to spy on Mabel and find out why she was selected in place of Amy. The next day, Sika is up first against a lean, mean swordsman who believes that magicians are worthless in close combat. Sika tells him that he is not feeling well, so he will finish things quickly, enraging his opponent who rushes at him as soon as the round starts. He stabs Sika, who exchanges places with one of his paper dolls before taking damage and moves behind the swordsman and yeets him out of the arena with magic. He wins the round immediately and heads back, where Yuki is worried that he is standing out too much. She is also concerned that Sika is spreading out his paper dolls too far and straining his body, but he replies that doing so is more important than the tournament itself. He goes to Yifa and Amy, and they see the next round begin between a magician and a mysterious ragged warrior. The ragged warrior Kyle uses his demon eye technique to paralyze the magician with fear, and then stabs him in the chest, killing him instantly. Sika realizes that the boy is a seasoned assassin, so he sends out some of his paper dolls to spy on him. Meanwhile, Mabel is also watching him as she prepares for her battle, and she seems upset about something. After that, Sika faces a golem using mage in the second round, who claims that her golem has been made specifically to fight against magic users. She commands her golem to attack him and Sika summons one of his fastest demon servants to slice through it before letting anyone realize what is happening. The golem is turned into rubble, and the woman gives up. Sika returns to his friends and Yifa is worried about his safety after seeing Kyle's fight. 
He assures her that he won't get harmed, but then Amy complains that his fights are and asks him if he is the same in bed too. Their bickering is interrupted as Mabel's fight begins, and they turn their attention towards the arena. Her opponent is a seasoned earth mage, but Mabel cuts through his attacks with her sharp swords. As the opponent chants stronger spells, Mabel throws knives at him, which shatter his rock walls easily. Sika realizes that she is using gravity magic to make her knives heavier than her mom and using them to break the walls. He believes that doing something like this is impossible with natural means and wonders how hard she trained for it. Mabel cuts the magician's staff and defeats him, and the commentator calls her the red-haired hero. Sika is confused because he doesn't understand this world's lore so well yet, and Amy tells him that the second hero was named Mabel, and she had the same hair color, as well as choice of weapons as their junior. Sika realizes what is going on, and at night, he intercepts a demon spy sending out a messenger pigeon to his folks. The man feigns ignorance and tries to attack Sika from behind, but he binds him with vines. The spy asks how he knew about him, and Sika tells him that he had his servants watching over him talk to other informants. Sika then asks him what message he sent, but the spy asks him to interrogate his dead body. Sika replies that he will ask his soul if he is not willing to talk, and he summons the tiny and creepy version of the Beast Titan. The crazy monkey is a demon that can read minds, and he creaks out the spy by stealing words from his mouth. Sika keeps on asking the spy some questions, and the monkey reads his mind and speaks about the demons he is working for. The spy believes that Mabel is the hero because she is a redhead girl with unbelievable power, and checks all the boxes that describe the hero. Sika thinks he has learned everything now, and he frees the man and gives him to his crazy monkey as a treat. The monkey eats the man and then turns to Sika, reading his thoughts, where he is full of pity for the man he just killed. Sika doesn't like his thoughts being read, so he threatens to kill the monkey if he doesn't stop. The monkey is terrified and hurries back into his room in the parallel dimension. Just then, Yukai emerges from his hair and Sika apologizes for scaring her. He has realized that the school sent Mabel to the tournament to make everyone believe that she is the hero, so that the real hero, Amy, can stay safe. He doesn't mind letting Mabel get all the attention and he has no intention to investigate the girl's true identity as long as she can prove useful to him. The next day, the tournament resumes and apart from Sika, Mabel, and Kyle, a magic swordsman who can use all four elements enters the semis. As soon as the four semifinalists are determined, Mabel tells Sika to forfeit, claiming that the tournament is not what he thinks it is. Sika says he has no intention to do that, but Mabel requests that he listen to her if he doesn't want to die. He still refuses and tells the redhead to be him fair and square if she wants to go into the finals. Soon, the first semifinal between Kyle and the nameless extra character starts. The extra uses light magic to make himself resistant to Kyle's demon eyes and even attacks him with fireballs. However, Kyle keeps walking towards him without even flinching. Sika realizes that Kyle is using grabby magic to reinforce his body to protect it from all sorts of attacks. The extra creates an army of golems to fight against him, but Kyle uses his shadow magic to destroy them all at once and then restricts the extra's movements to finish him. However, just before he strikes him down, the judges blow the whistle to declare that the fight is over. At night, Sika tells Yuki that he plans to lose tomorrow to keep his low profile. She suddenly takes the form of a human and asks her master to show her some love, but he tells her to stop. Just then, his owl spots Mabel on the roof and Sika hugs Yuki and jumps out of the way before Mabel sends the roof crashing down. Sika tells Mabel that there are better ways to enter a man's bedroom, but she is not here to talk. She attacks him and takes him out of the window, where she launches many quick attacks at him. She dodges the tangling vines and rushes to stab Sika, but only manages to stab one of his paper dolls. Sika uses his force eject spell after teleporting behind her, but she resists it, showing that she is stronger than he thinks. Sika wonders if he should dispose of her, but then a drunkard interrupts their fight and Mabel uses him as a decoy to run away. Yuki comes out and asks what the crazy girl is thinking and Sika replies that they should ask her directly. He finds Mabel being nostalgic near a fountain, and as she is startled at seeing him, he says that he is here to talk and not to fight. Sika asks her to tell him the entire truth, and then he might consider accepting her suggestion to quit. Mabel calls an old weirdo, and then reveals that she was planning to injure him so that he wouldn't fight tomorrow. She once again requests that Sika quit because she won't be able to hold back against him and she doesn't want to kill him. However, as Sika remarks that she is here to act as Amy's proxy and win the tournament to turn everyone's attention away from her, the girl is shocked. Sika believes that there is another reason she is here, and Mabel decides to tell him the truth. She claims that her role here is to die at the hands of Kyle to make the demons think that the hero is dead. She states that she and Kyle are both orphans that were taken up by an underground organization that trained them to be assassins ever since they were young. The organization puts the orphans together in groups of four people who grow strong together as they bond with each other.
However, when they hit puberty, the strongest of the group has a magic spell implanted in his head that destroys his emotions and turns him into a mindless killing machine. In her group, Kyle got the magic spell, and he was required to kill all three of his friends to prove his skills. He killed two of them already, but then the organization found a way to make money out of Mabel by making Kyle famous as the hero killer, so they sent her to the tournament. However, she does not plan to silently die at his hands and wants to kill him. Mabel claims that Kyle killed her brother, who was in the same group, but Sika calls her bluff. He knows that Kyle is her real brother, and she wants to kill him to free him from his cruel fate. She is astonished by his correct deduction and tells Sika that it was her brother's last wish to be stopped by her if he became a monster. That is why she wants to enter the finals no matter what and defeat him by risking her life. Sika gets up and says that he has changed his mind and now he will enter the finals and beat Kyle for her. Mabel says it is her job to do that, but he replies that she will only lose her life if she fights Kyle. He asks her to return to the academy and promises that no one will say anything to her there because he will protect her. Sika tells Mabel that her brother would want her to be free and happy more than anything else, and he will fulfill his wishes. Mabel is left speechless, but she tells Sika that she won't hold back tomorrow, and he replies that he will prove to her that he is the strongest. The next day, they face each other in the arena. As Mabel wields her giant axe, she claims that a spoiled noble boy won't be able to defeat her. The duel starts, and despite her heavy weapon, Mabel moves with incredible speed and puts Sika on the back foot with her powerful strikes. He attacks her by shooting rocks at her, but she uses the momentum of the axe to dodge the attack and counters by throwing mags at him. Sika blocks them and then ties her up with vines, but Mabel breaks free of them with brute force. Sika puts one of his paper dolls on her axe to make it a thousand times heavier so she can't even lift it. He then summons sturdier vines to restrain her and picks up her axe. The judges signal Sika's victory and the duel is over instantly. Mabel feels lost after her defeat and Sika asks her to leave Kyle to him. Soon, the final round of the tournament between Sika and Kyle starts. Sika asks the ultimate emo boy if he was expecting to fight Mabel, and he replies that it was the plan. He has truly lost all his emotions and says he will still kill her because he has been ordered to do so. Sika does not like his stone-cold attitude and says that he will make sure to change it after defeating him. The battle starts and Sika uses a crimson mist to block Kyle's demon eye from affecting him. Kyle still walks towards him unfazed despite Sika attacking him with his blue fireball. He then ties him using the metallic vines that stop Mabel, but Kyle is able to break them using shadow magic before attacking Sika with it. Sika blocks the attack using a barrier, but he's getting irritated by Kyle's emo act, so he summons a four-armed demon to show him his place. Kyle attacks the demon, who remains unharmed, and shatters his bones with a light attack. Sika remarks that if he had his emotions, he would feel true fear as he faced an opponent stronger than him, and running away would save his life. He approaches the unconscious Kyle when suddenly, a curse appears all over his body. Sika erects a barrier to subdue the curse, but has already harmed Kyle's body seriously. However, he has regained his personality for a brief time, and as Sika tries to diagnose his symptoms, he asks him to apologize to Mabel on his behalf. Kyle dies with that, and Sika is furious that someone was trying to beat him with a curse. His pride as the strongest exorcist is wounded, and he decides to use his full abilities to bring him back to life. As he begins chanting a spell to revive Kyle, Yuki begs him to stop, as reviving his opponent will attract too much attention. Sika realizes she is speaking the truth, so he stops with the revival spell. As the red mist clears, Sika stores Kyle's body in a parallel dimension and claims that he evaporated him without leaving even a trace behind. He wins the tournament with that, and later, he buries Kyle's dead body in a quiet spot with Mabel's help. She knew her brother was cursed to die if he lost, so she had given up any hope to save him. Sika passes Kyle's final message to her, in which he apologizes about the four-leaf clover. Mabel cries, saying that right before the surgery, her brother accidentally broke her favorite hairpin with the four-leaf clover design, and they got into a fight because of it. She cries for a long time before asking Sika, what will happen to her now? He tells her to return to the academy as he will make sure everything works out for her. Mabel happily takes up his offer and returns with Sika to the carriage, where Yifa and Amy are waiting for them. They already heard most of the story from Sika and accept Mabel despite knowing her past. Amy challenges Mabel to a sword fight again and this time she uses gravity magic to strengthen her sword. After winning, she brags about being at the top of her class in practical lessons and then asks Mabel to become her training partner at school because no one else is close to her abilities. Soon, Sika and his group return to the academy, and he goes to talk to the principal. He has figured out that she wanted him to join the tournament to save Mabel's life, and the principal is impressed by his judgment. 
She claims that the underground organization sold Mabel to her because they were planning to get her killed anyway, but she pitied the girl who had faced many hardships. She wanted to save the girl, so she relied on Sika because she could tell that he is the strongest person around. The principal then assures Mabel's safety at the academy and asks Sika to help her out as her senior. After that, Sika goes to the common room where he finds that Mabel's hair dye has worn off because she no longer needs to pretend to be a hero. Now she is terrified of Sika, who is very strict as he helps her study, and she gets no help from Yifa and Ami either. Soon the mid-semester break starts and Sika gets a task from his father to investigate a dragon in a nearby kingdom. Amy wants to go with him, but Sika reminds her that her parents must be waiting for her, even Mabel has been adopted, so she will also spend her time with her new parents. Ifa looks a bit nervous because she wants to go with Sika, and he invites her to come along with him. Just then Cecile, the crown prince of the Asteria Kingdom, comes to the dining hall and remarks that it looks like they are in a third world country. His elf servant asks him to be mindful of snowflakes, so Cecile decides not to comment on anything and goes straight to Sika and introduces himself. Suddenly, his gaze goes to Yifa, and he is smitten by her beauty, so he asks her to join his harem and become one of his wives. Yifa is at a loss for words, but she manages to say that she is Sika's slave, so she can't accept his offer. Cecile then turns to Sika and asks him to name his price for trading the girl, and before he can come up with an answer, the prince's elf servant, Liz, asks him to take this matter somewhere else. They meet in a private office, where Cecile tells Sika that the mission to investigate the dragon has been issued by their kingdom, he tells Sika that the dragon has lived in harmony with the people of his kingdom for over a century, but now it has suddenly started to act up. Sika wants to know why the dragon has lived in harmony with humans for so long, and Cecile tells him the story of a queen who helped hatch the dragon from its egg. He doesn't know if that story is true and asks Sika to investigate that too while he looks for the dragon. Later, as Sika is returning to his dorms, Amy and Mabel pull him into the bushes and ask him if he is planning to hand over Yifa to the womanizer prince. He promises he won't let her go, but it will be a different case if she likes the prince too. The girls comment that he is dumber than a fish if he thinks Yifa will leave him, and they ask him not to bring up this topic with her again. The next day, Sika and Yifa depart with Cecile's group. Yifa believes that prince like Cecile won't really want to add a slave like her to his harem, but Sika thinks he is serious about it. Yifa smiles, saying that it makes her a little happy to hear that, and Sika feels jealous for the first time in a long time. After a long journey, they reach the capital of the Asteria Kingdom, and Cecile remarks that it is a very peaceful place, but the dragon is causing problems with that. He points at the dragon flying over the city and scaring people, and Sika remarks that it is quite big. The dragon suddenly turns towards them and flies dangerously close to them, startling Yifa. Suddenly, a summoner calls forth a lava tiger to face the dragon. The dragon flees, but then the lava tiger notices the helpless Yifa and rushes towards her. Sika traps it using crystal pillars, but the lava tiger melts them easily and rushes towards him instead. Sika is about to erase the tiger from existence when its summoner puts a leash around its neck and stops it. He calls the tiger back and Sisio comes running to scold the summoner named Zek for letting his beast attack guests. However, Zek smugly tells him that there are bigger things to worry about as the dragon has become more impatient and dangerous in the past few days. Sika learns that Cecile has hired mercenaries led by Zek to slay the dragon if they can't find a way to stop it. Sika says that's a bad idea because Zek's lava tiger won't be able to defeat the dragon, but it might make it really angry. Zek arrogantly tells Sika to shut up because he knows nothing of the real world. Sika says that he should learn to control his tiger before lecturing others and warns him not to summon him where he can see him the next time. Sisio breaks their fight and sends Zek off. After that, Sika asks him if he has the queen's approval for slaying the dragon and learns that the prince was acting on his own. He asks Sika to stay out of his country's politics, so he turns to Yifa and lectures her about fighting for herself. He says that he won't be around her forever and she must use her magic to protect herself. Yifa is in tears after hearing this and Sika forbids the prince from interfering between him and his servant. Sika knows that his words were harsh, but he knows that she must overcome her fear or she will pay a great price because of it. In his previous life, one of his students was eaten by the dragon before he had tamed it, and he does not want Yifa to go through that. The next day, Sika gathers information about the dragon in the library and finds that the dragon behaved strangely 150 years ago too. That time, there was a pair of dragons in the mountains that had laid eggs. To keep attackers away, they scared humans and monsters alike and stole cattle to feed their kids. However, the female dragon died a few years later, and now only the male dragon lives. Yifa believes that this time the cause of the dragon's agitation cannot be childbirth, but Sika plans to climb the mountain to find out the truth. Yifa says it is dangerous but he assures her that he will be fine. 
At night, while he is busy with his research, Yifa knocks at his door because Cecile had sent a maid to invite her to his bedroom. She doesn't want to go and is scared to be alone, so Sika lets her share his room and his bed. As they lie with their backs to each other, Sika asks Yifa if she plans to join the prince's harem, and she refuses. He asks her not be shy, and if she is holding back because of him, she should go to the prince already. Yifa is hurt by his words and says that if he is upset that she is weak and cowardly, she will improve on those things, but she doesn't want to leave him. Sika realizes that he chose the wrong words and tells Yifa that he only wanted to tell her that being invited to a royal harem was a great chance for any woman. He says that he will be a bit lonely without her, but it is her decision at last. Yifa says she will think about it in that case, and she goes to sleep with tears in her eyes. The next morning, Sika finds that she left the room before he woke up. Yuki also pops out and tells him that he was too hard on the girl who has loved her since forever, but he refuses to believe that. He later goes to Cecile and confronts him about inviting Yifa to his room late at night. The prince apologizes and once again asks Sika to sell his servant to him. Sika says that he won't treat Yifa as an object that he can give to anyone else, but if she wants to join his harem, she is free to go. After that, Sika informs Cecile that he plans to climb the mountain to investigate the dragon, and he hopes that the prince doesn't try to make a move on Yifa at that time. Soon, he wishes Yifa goodbye as he departs for the mountain. And as she returns to the palace, the elf Liz approaches her. She has realized that Yifa has the ability to see the spirits because she has the blood of elves running through her veins. She asks her to join Cecile's harem, saying that it is a better option than staying a monster's slave. Liz asks Yifa if she has not noticed how the spirits avoid Sika like he is releasing demonic miasma. She replies that despite everything, Sika is a human and she has known him to be a kind boy ever since they were little. Liz asks her more questions about her master's origin and learns that no one knows who Sika's mother is. She claims that the mother could very well be a demon and asks Yifa to stay away from her dangerous master. Yifa is nervous and Liz uses this chance to take her on a tour of the harem. While his girl is being manipulated against him, Sika climbs the mountain by riding on his giant centipede and finds the dragon's nest. The CGI dragon is aggressive and immediately attacks Sika, who blocks his fire breath with his barrier. The dragon charges at him, but Sika dodges his attack and then summons a demon with incredible weight to pin him down. After that, he traps the dragon in an unbreakable net and goes to the nest, where he finds the dragon's egg. Yugi pops out and asks how a male dragon can lay an egg, and Sika replies that dragons are gender-fluid species that can change from male to female as they wish, much like delusional teens. Sika decides to roll the egg around to help in the hatching process, and the story about the queen hatching a dragon egg suddenly starts making sense to him. His actions capture the dragon's heart, which signs him the task of the baby gaddy. Sika creates a fire circle and keeps rolling the egg while the dragon rests. He is tired of caring for the egg and decides to return to the palace to tell the prince that the dragon won't attack them needlessly. However, the dragon doesn't want him to leave and pulls him closer to cuddle. On the other hand, Yifa finds that there is an entire palace dedicated to teaching the girls to various disciples, and they all live together happily, much to her surprise. Liz claims that this place develops the girls in the harem to be important figures in the future, and the prince wants to find a suitable candidate to be his wife among them. She assures Yifa that while Cecile might be impatient and inexperienced, is not a bad person, and she asks her to join his harem and support him as his queen. Yifa is not sure about her response, and then Liz leads her to the prince, who was waiting for her along with a slave trader and a court official. Cecile asks the trader to evaluate Yifa's worth and then brings the money he estimates her value to be. Yifa is terrified and asks what is going on, and the prince tells her that he is going to pay this money to Sika to free her from her slave status. Yifa says he shouldn't do that without Sika's approval, but Cecile is confident that he can win him over with a fair price, and if Sika refuses to obey even then, he will pass a law to forcibly buy all the slaves in the country just to have Yifa. Yifa says she doesn't want to be freed because, even though she is a slave, Sika has given her the freedom of choice. Cecile understands, but his officials tell him that the girl is too naive to think for herself and they should force her to break the contract. He immediately commands his guards to hold her, and as Yifa tries to command the spirits to help her, Liz uses her domain so that she cannot use her magic here. She tells Yifa that this is for her sake as well and cuts her thumb with a wind spell. As she is about to take her thumbprint on an official document, Yifa cries, asking Sika to save her, and suddenly, the looming figure of the dragon appears there, shattering Liz's domain. Sika makes his entry, telling the prince and others not to be afraid as he has befriended the dragon. Yifa is relieved to see him, and as Sika calls her along to help him with the dragon egg, she happily runs to him, telling Liz and Cecile that she won't leave Sika's side no matter what. They ride the dragon and Yifa thanks Sika for helping her earlier, but he doesn't even know what he saved her from. 
Just as they reach the nest, the lava tiger of Zekt attacks them and Sika traps it with crystal pillars again. He asks Zekt to stop hiding and come out, and he comes with his entire gang. He declares that he was planning to kill the dragon and steal its egg from the start, and the foolish prince believed all the lies he fed him and gave him permission. He tells Sika to prepare to die and commands the tiger to attack him. Even before Sika can attack the tiger, Yifa uses her magic and sends the tiger flying with a fountain of water. She declares that she won't stay timid and helpless anymore and Sika is impressed by her determination. Zekt is furious and commands his tiger and his men to attack them, but Sika uses a powerful white fire that burns the tiger without leaving even ashes behind. Zekt and the mercenaries are terrified of him, but then the dragon also joins the fight, forcing them to run. Sika ties them up with vines and in a last-ditch effort, Zekt decides to blow up the entire mountain with his greatest spell. However, Yifa sets his spell book on fire, making him utterly useless. Sika praises Yifa for becoming brave so quickly, before taking the mercenaries to the prince and reporting their crimes. Cecil commands them to be locked up, and then asks Sika to tell him about the dragon. Sika tells him that the dragon had laid an egg and accepted him because he helped care for the egg. This makes him believe that the story about the queen hatching a dragon was true, and the only reason dragons have protected this country for so long is because they saw the queen as their parent. Sika asks Cecile to uphold the tradition and help hatch the dragon's egg, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants the glory of slaying the dragon that will help him rise in power, and for that he asks Sika to kill the dragon. Sika refuses, so Cecile places him under arrest on false claims to agitate the dragon. He plans to play docile for now, but then the prince goes to Yifa and asks her to leave her monster master and come to his side. Sika can't let this slide and lashes out at the prince, saying that he has been thinking with his lower brain this entire time. He calls him an incompetent asshole and a pervert who can't even do his job properly. He declares he won't give away Yifa to someone like him, and then realizes that he has become too dramatic. Liz starts laughing and orders the soldiers to put down their swords before asking Yifa to speak her mind. Yifa tells Cecile that she will go back to the academy with Sika, and even if she is free, she will choose him over anyone else. The dejected prince gives up and Liz apologizes to Sika for all that happened and like a cuck, he simply forgives them. After that, Liz calls Yifa for a private chat, where she asks her if she loves Sika. Yifa is flustered and Liz says she could have said that from the beginning. As an apology, she gives her some of her rare shiny pokemons, I mean light spirits, that healed her finger instantly. Liz wishes Yifa all the best and hopes that she finds happiness with Sika. Soon they return home and Sika learns that Yifa is a descendant of elves, which is why she can use spirit magic. He is glad that she rejected the loser prince and asks what kind of guy she likes. While Yifa clearly describes him, Sika's romantic dumbness comes into play, and he believes that it is hard to find guys like that. Later, Sika meets up with Amy and Mabel in the academy and tells them that his father wants to meet his friends. He invites them to come to his house during the spring break, and they are happy to oblige. However, as he is left alone, Sika sighs because he really doesn't want to go back home because the one who wants to meet him and his friends is not his dad but some important political figure. Even though he doesn't want to meet that person, he has no choice but to obey. A few days later, Sika reaches home with his friends where Luff receives them. Just as they are done with the introductions, Glay comes there, shouting Sika's name and challenging him to a duel again. Sika greets him and asks him if he is having fun in the army, and Glai replies that he is doing much better than he thought, so he's a bit grateful to him. However, he still hasn't gotten over his humiliating defeat and wants to fight Sika again. Amy asks Yifa if he was the bully brother, and as soon as she affirms, she goes ahead and volunteers to fight on Sika's behalf. Sika is also happy to hear that and tells Glai that he must defeat Amy to fight him. Glai accepts the condition and asks Amy to use her real sword while he fights with a wooden sword. Stika is made the referee, and he forbids the use of magic before starting the fight. Amy pushes Glay back and he loses balance, giving her the chance to finish him. However, he starts chanting a spell that startles Amy, and he manages to disarm her. She accuses him of cheating, but Glai replies that it was her fault for getting fooled by a fake spell. Now that he has defeated the redhead, Glee asks Stika to fight him, and suddenly, a princess comes there and she is excited to see her holy knight in a fight. Glee is taken aback as he sees Princess Fiona there when she was supposed to be in her room right now. He asks her what she is doing here, and she laughs that she ditched the guards to come here and see him lose. Glai gives up after hearing her words, and Sika is surprised that the girl managed to tame his wild nature. He then introduces Fiona as the holy princess of their kingdom, and the girls are shocked to learn that. 
As they head back inside to talk, Sika tells Yuki that Fiona was called the Holy Princess because her mother was a priestess, and she inherited her abilities as well as the strength of the royal blood. They sit for tea, and Amy whispers to Sika about why the Holy Princess is here. Fiona replies that she wants to meet the hero of this era, making Amy blush. She then butters up Sika, saying she's heard a lot of things about him too, and asks him and his party to escort her to the capital. Sika accepts her request, and after the princess leaves, the girls ask him why he kept her a secret till now, and he can't give them a proper answer. At night, they gather for dinner, and Fiona says things that indicate she might be on crack, but by doing so, she cleverly finds out about Sika befriending a dragon and Yifa's love for him, and that Mabel is not a noble by birth. While they are idly chatting, Sika's adoptive dad recalls his conversation with his assistant, who was also Yifa's father. The assistant was angry that his daughter was sent to serve Sika, who was a creepy, illegitimate child of unknown origins, but Robert was confident that he is his son's brother and a good person. Later, as Sika is relaxing in his room, Yuki mimics Fiona and says that she doesn't like her at all. Sika understands what she means and then remarks that his wife in his previous life was like that too. Yuki is astonished to hear this and wants to learn more, but then Amy comes there. Sika is startled, but Amy simply plops on his bed and starts asking him about his future plans. She claims that she will go adventuring after graduation and asks Sika if he plans to pursue higher studies. He reminds her about their promise to go on adventures together, and he intends to become an adventurer to do that. Amy is happy to hear that and tells him that she will be looking forward to that. After she leaves, Yuki climbs down from Sika's head and reminds him that he was only getting close to Amy to hide his strength, using her as a decoy, and he says he remembers it all. The next day, Sika takes Fiona on a tour of the city, with Amy and Goli as her only guards. She is having fun and even holds Sika's hands to go through the market, pretending that they are on a date. She wants to be even closer to him and decides to use the age-old trope of getting saved by the guy to get closer to him. She clings to Sika and asks him to keep close to her in case something unexpected happens. Fiona leads him to a construction site where a rope breaks right above them and a pile of wood comes falling down. Glee and Amy quickly take action, breaking the wooden logs and shielding the princess with earth magic. They ask Sika if he was sleeping earlier and he says he was counting on them. Fiona does not seem too pleased that someone else saved her instead of Sika, and to make up for that, he gives her a ribbon. He even creates a magic mirror so that she can look at herself, and the princess is happy to receive his gift. Later, Sika finds Glee practicing his sword skills and asks him why the princess chose him as her holy knight. Glee says that despite her innocent looks, Fiona is a seasoned politician and she chose him not because of his skills, but because of some grand plan. He adds that she gave the name Holy Knights to her guards to attract clout. Sika says that Fiona seems to be a normal girl, but Goli tells him he could be more wrong. He says that Fiona was once forbidden to even leave her room, but now she is one of the candidates to become the next ruler. All of that was possible because she has the ability to see the future. Sika is stunned as he hears this, and Goli tells him that Fiona's mother also had the power to predict the future, and she had predicted the birth of the demon lord and the hero. The kingdom hasn't confirmed anything yet, but based on Fiona's interest in Amy, Goli thinks it is safe to say that she is the hero. He tells Sika to be careful with the princess because she seems to be interested in him too, and he asks him not to get too close to her. The next day, Fiona starts looking for Sika, but he keeps teleporting away from her. He doesn't want to get too involved with her, just like Glee advised him to. Soon he bumps into Amy, who is going to spar with Glee, and she tells Sika to give some time to the princess because she looks too sad that he is ignoring her. Sika goes to the rooftop to find Fiona playing chess by herself, but as she sees him, she invites him for a game. She claims to be Magnus Carlsen of this world and decides to play with only pawns and the king to be fair with Sika. On top of that, she also places a bet that the loser will have to accept one request from the winner. Sika takes her on, and they discuss politics while playing. Fiona believes that in any country, the greatest power belongs to the people, and that is why she is traveling across the empire to spread her name so that people will support her. She wants to take help from nameless people to consolidate her strength, and she thinks that Sika can be useful to her too. He confronts her about her future vision, and Fiona says that she was about to tell him the truth soon herself. She says that she wants to use her powers to help others, and she wants Sika to help her with that. Fiona doesn't tell them much about her power, but he still agrees to help her. She easily defeats him in the game of chess and smiles as she says that she will think carefully about the one request he cannot refuse. The next day, it is time for them to leave for the capital, and they bid Luft a long goodbye before departing. Sika takes the carriage with Fiona and Goli, and his motion sickness puts him in a bad mood right away. He is still keeping an eye on their convoy using his servants, and he asks his brother about the knights and bandits found in this region. 
Just then, someone attacks a convoy and destroys one of the carriages containing luggage. Sika jumps to the top of the carriage and finds that bandits have surrounded their group from all sides. The archers shoot at him, but he uses a magnetic shield to deflect their arrows. The leader of the bandits is frustrated as his archers and mages prove useless before Sika, and then Glide takes charge of the situation and commands his knights to take the bandits down. Fiona comes out and asks Sika to take all the bandits alive, and he ties them up using vines to fulfill her request. Soon the girls also join Sika, and Amy is disappointed that she didn't get to fight. After that, she says that it was strange for bandits to attack such a heavily guarded group. Just then, Fiona calls Sika to her carriage to thank him and states that she needed the bandits alive to serve as proof that someone tried to assassinate her. She had seen this future already, and therefore she had brought extra carriages to transport the assassins to the capital. Sika says it is dangerous as the bandits could try to escape and attack the princess again, but she assures him that they won't do anything reckless because they will be waiting for backup that will never come. Soon the group arrives at the capital, and Fiona gets oddly sentimental as she wishes Sika and his friends goodbye. Before leaving, she tells Sika to never forget that she is by his side, and he doesn't understand what she means. Soon Sika returns to the academy and the principal gives him the position of the student council president. He accepts that position, but as he returns to his dorm, Yuki asks if taking the prestigious position won't make him stand out more. Sika replies that he has been thinking about changing his ways for some time now. He feels like dying after being cornered in his past life made him a coward, so if he wants to live like a normal person who doesn't try to remain low-key most of the time. He wants to enjoy his remaining school life and then the life of an adventurer after that. As for the ever-increasing number of powerful enemies, he wants to deal with them without letting anyone know what happened. Stika does not know that he will have to face enemies sooner than he anticipates because a group of powerful demons has arrived outside the Academy City, and their sole mission is to slay the hero. The leader of the demon party feels a powerful presence inside the city, and he believes it is the hero. His plan to kill the hero involves driving all the students to the center of the Academy City, and then slaughtering them all there. He believes that even if the hero is hiding, she will come to save her classmates. The leader declares that they will surely kill the hero and return home alive, and his friends believe him. Aside from the leader, the group involves Bub Bunny's cousin, who can summon monsters, Hellboy's uncle, the demonic version of Sleeping Beauty, and a plain old demon. The demons teleport themselves inside the city, but they find it covered with a thick crimson mist. The regular demon spots two students taking a walk in the park and attacks them with fire magic, but he finds that he hasn't killed anyone with that attack. Bunny Boy and Sleeping Beauty go to another location, and they flirt with each other as they try to find some humans to kill. They talk about how they were the strongest people in their villages, but then they met the captain and learned that they still had room to grow. They left on the journey together and grew stronger, now they feel they can really win against the hero. Suddenly, they spot someone nearby and Bunny Boy sends his shadow wolves to chase them. The wolves don't find anyone, and they return with something that surprises their master. In another location, Hellboy's uncle finds Mabel, who challenges him head-on. She believes that he is an assassin sent by the underground organization that trained her and attacks him with her giant axe, but he is stronger than her and blocks her attack before launching a flurry of powerful blows that keep Mabel on her edge. She counterattacks with her gravity-infused weapon, and the demon realizes she is quite powerful. As Mabel attacks him again, he manages to toss away her weapon, but she hits him with her knives. The demon says he won't be defeated by that, and then suddenly, Mabel activates her shadow magic and binds him. She tells him to surrender, but Hellboy Sr. tears apart the shadow binds because he has resistance to all magic elements. He attacks Mabel and lands a strong blow on her, but finds that all he hit was a paper doll. The demon captain is at the center of the academy campus, and soon his party comes there. They all have the same story about humans turning into paper dolls the moment they are attacked. They feel something is odd about this place, and their captain decides to retreat immediately. Suddenly, Sika makes his appearance, singing a poem he wrote long ago. The demon captain uses his magic eyes to gauge his strength and finds that he is far too strong for them. Sika tells the demons that, except for the girl with the giant axe, all the humans they faced were fake. Hellboy's uncle claims that the girl was strong, but he can tell that Sika is even stronger than her. He challenges him to a fight, but gets his head sliced off clean all of a sudden. Sika was just playing around with a paper doll he had cursed the demon with, and he says that he was quite weak despite his muscular build. The Sleeping Beauty is furious and rushes to attack Sika, even though the captain tells her to stop. She unleashes her demonic eye ability that can turn anyone to stone, but it doesn't work on Sika, who says he will show her something similar to her powers. He summons a giant white snake. The snake has its eyes sewn shut, and even then, 
Its gaze stops the heart of the demon girl, killing her instantly. Bunny Boy is furious, and he attacks the white snake with his giant black snake, but isn't able to do any damage. He was using that just as a decoy so that he could get closer to the white snake and use his tamer skills to become friends with him. He is confident that he can tame the snake as it comes near, but as he turns around, the snake swallows him whole. Sika laughs about his useless attempt as he sends the snake back and the demon captain realizes that they never had any chance to defeat the boy. Despite being terrified of Sika's power, the captain tells his remaining teammate to run away while he holds the enemy at bay. He wants the regular demon to go back to the demon realm and tell everyone about the monster in human form. The regular demon asks the captain who is the boy in front of him and he uses his magic eyes to confirm that Sika is indeed the demon lord. The demons cannot digest this information, but then Sika tells them that he won't let them kill the hero and they realize that the strongest demon lord in history has sided with humans. Sika attacks the demons with the lava tsunami and the captain tries to block it with his barrier to let his friend get away. He succeeds in letting him get away at the cost of his life, but Sika does not plan to let him go far away. As the injured demon takes rest under a tree, he finds a deep cut in his chest and dies, wondering how a human can be the demon lord. Back in the academy, Sika stabbed a doll with a knife to kill him before dispersing the mist. Just then, Mabel comes running to him and asks him where the giant red assassin went because she's afraid he might attack other people. Sika realizes that the magic spell he used to keep people away did not work on Mabel because of her strong mind, and he assures her that the demon assassin was after the hero and not her. He says he has already dealt with the problem and asks her to keep it a secret. Soon, the welcome party for the new batch of students is organized and Sika has to give a speech as the student council president. He talks with Amy about her speech during their welcome ceremony and she delivers it again because that time it was interrupted by the demon attack. Sika doesn't bother to tell her that the demon attacked the academy just to get her. As he is about to leave to give his speech, a group of Manx barges into the hall looking for Amy. The night captain accuses her of slaying a demon emissary that came to the academy a few days ago and arrests her, despite Amy claiming that she never met a demon. Stika is nervous as he realizes that there is something big going on in the dark. As the knights go to arrest Amy, Yifa and Mabel try to stop them, but Sika tells them to not do anything. He assures them and Amy that they don't need to worry about anything because she is innocent and won't be punished. The knights take this as an insult and try to apprehend him too, but the captain tells them to stop, and they take Amy away. Sika goes straight to the principal's office, who says that demons were really here at the academy, and they were killed here without anyone noticing their presence. She knows Sika was behind that incident and asks him if he is here to lecture her about letting the Empire arrest one of her students. Sika replies that he knows that the Empire is trying to kill a hero, and he just wants to know the reason behind it. The principal says that the politics of the Empire are complicated, and there are many reasons behind the arrest of Amy. She assures Sika that she is doing her best to apply pressure on the nobles who release the girl. She asks him to stay put and wait for the good news, but Sika doesn't believe her efforts will bear fruit. He says that before her pressure does something, Amy might die under suspicious circumstances. The principal is taken aback and Sika takes his leave after telling her to try her best anyway. Yifa and Mabel are waiting for him outside the office, and they want to join Sika if he decides to rescue Amy. As soon as he comes out of the office, he tells them to calm down because they can't do anything to help Amy on their own and ask them to let the principal handle it. He says he will wait at the academy patiently. But that's a big fat lie and he summons his dragon at night. The dragon is still rebellious and Sika strains himself to get it under control. Yuki suggests that Sika should give up on saving the girl if he wants to live a good life in this world. She believes that if he tries to save her, he will directly confront the most powerful people in this empire and the story of his last life may be repeated. However, Sika is furious because he still sees one of his dear disciples in Amy and he doesn't want to see her get hurt. He declares that he won't leave any witnesses so no one will know that he is powerful. Yuki is terrified of his rage and decides to rest her case because she can't change his mind. He gets on the dragon and commands it to fly towards Amy immediately. Meanwhile, Amy is in prison, where she wonders what is going to happen to her now. She misses her friends and believes that she won't be able to see them again. As Amy sheds tears, remembering her friends, someone pays her a visit. In the meantime, Sika has reached the city where she is being held captive. He spreads out his paper dolls and turns them into rats to gather information for him. Sika soon finds Amy's location and walks into the castle from the air. He returns the dragon to the parallel dimension there and a guard spots him. He tries to stop Sika, but when he doesn't listen, the guard blows a whistle to alert all the soldiers in the area. They were waiting for an attack like this and quickly get into formation. The archers shoot arrows at Sika and uses the magnetic storm to deflect them all. 
He finds the guards persistent, so he summons two giant boulders to crush their firing posts immediately. He breaks through the doors and enters the castle's interior, where more guards are waiting for them. They ask him to identify himself and explain his purpose for attacking them, but Sika simply tells them to move aside if they want to live. The guards are furious and shoot fire arrows at him, forcing him to dodge and hide. He is annoyed by their tactics and uses his white flame spell to turn them into ash in an instant. After that, Sika summons his sickle weasel, which chops and dices the soldiers in an instant. The remaining soldiers are scared of him now, but they still attack Sika out of desperation. He burns them using his blue flames while letting the weasel run free and kill the soldiers as he pleases. After wreaking havoc inside the castle for a few minutes, Sika goes to Amy's cell. She is stunned to see him, and Sika destroys the prison door as he tells her he is here to take her back. Amy is worried about him, and she reminds him that his actions will have serious consequences for him and his family. Sika reminds her that her life is in danger, but she tells him that she will be fine and they will release her in no time. She tells him to return immediately and wait for him at school, but Sika says that won't be possible. He tells Amy that she is the hero from the fairy tales who reincarnates to fight the Demon King every time. He claims that she is going to be killed because those without power fear those having it. Sika asks Amy to come with him so that they can escape, but then he senses someone coming towards them and attacks him with a fireball. The intruder deflects the fireball and Sika is surprised to learn that he is facing his brother Gly. Sika asks him if he wants to have their duel now, but then Fiona comes there and says there is no need for that. Sika is not surprised to see her and thinks that she must have seen this moment in advance. He asks her to explain what is going on here He wants to know if she is also going to attack him now. Fiona replies that she just wants to talk to him because she knows how powerful he really is. She claims that she will answer all his questions to show her good faith because she wants him to accept her offer after that. Sika asks her why they are planning to kill Amy when she is the hero and Fiona starts talking about the story of the first hero. When humans and demons first fought each other, they did not know how to deal with opponents that were much stronger than them. However, when the powerful hero arrived, she changed the course of the battle alone. She says that at that time, the hero was a symbol of peace, just as the demon lord was a symbol of destruction. However, in the current time, the human and demon armies are strong enough to fight for their people, and the hero and the demon lord are relics of the past. Sika says that it is no reason to kill Amy, and Fiona replies that even the existence of the hero can start wars with the demons. She claims that no one wants war now, not even demons, and that is why they were sending assassins after the hero, not to win the war, but to prevent it. Fiona then declares that Amy will never become as strong as the previous heroes because Sika is with her. A hero needs to overcome hardships to grow stronger, but since Sika can save his friends from everything, Amy won't be able to become strong. Fiona knows that Sika is helping her because he needs the strength of the hero, and she tells him that protecting her won't help his plans. Sika asks her if she wants him to let his friend die so that the world can have peace and Fiona replies that she does not want that. She promises that she is on the side of the academy and is trying her best to free Amy, but she needs Sika to leave for that. She assures him that she will do everything in her power to keep her safe and even make it appear like Sika was not here, so he is not arrested. Sika scoffs as he says that he doesn't care about being arrested, but then Fiona reminds him about the bet they made over the game of chess. He is lost in thought as Amy tells him to listen to the princess, but Sika tells her to shut up. He tells Fiona that he has no good reason to trust her, and she appears hurt. She gives up and tells Sika to take Amy and run away, and even orders Glide to disperse the guards. Fiona leads Sika and Amy to a carriage she had prepared for them just in case. She asks them to leave for a free city not under the control of any country because she has already made preparations for their stay there. Sika accepts her help, and before they leave, Amy returns the blanket to Fiona thanking her for her help. She tells Sika that when she was in prison earlier, Fiona and Goliath came to meet her and assured her that she would be out in no time. They wish each other goodbye and Sika regrets his actions a little bit. He tells Fiona that he is sorry because he couldn't honor his promise to listen to her request, and he wants to make up for it by doing something else. He goes towards the area where he just fought the soldiers and summons all of his paper dolls, which he has been hiding in the parallel dimension. The paper dolls cover the sky and create a barrier around the fortress. Amy and Fiona can't believe their eyes, and then Sika's spell is completed, bringing all the soldiers back to life and even restoring the damage he did to the castle. Fiona is shocked to see this, and she scolds Sika for making her job even harder. She was initially planning to blame everything on a powerful monster, but she can't help it now that Sika has brought her soldiers back to life. Fiona sighs, saying that she couldn't stop him even if she wanted, and then wishes him goodbye and says that they will surely meet again one day. Sika and Amy take the carriage, and she asks him to explain what just happened. His conversation with Fiona went above her head, and she wants to know why she cannot become stronger, even if she is the hero. 
She drowns Sika in questions, but he isn't even listening to her because he is wondering how to drive a carriage. Fiona looks at him from the castle and a demon hiding in her shadow suddenly starts talking to her. It asks about Sika's true identity because he is the strongest person he has ever seen. Fiona says that Sika is the demon lord and the shadow demon doesn't understand why he would try to protect the hero then. Fiona smiles as she says that it is because of his kind personality. She knows that in the end, Sika will have no choice but to use his powers to help others, even though destruction waits for him at the end. With that, Sika and Amy leave on their journey to the free city. They know they can't show their faces at the academy because they are wanted criminals now, and they wonder how to contact Yifa and Mabel. Amy says they can worry about it later, and now that they can't go back to the academy, they can start their adventurous lives earlier. However, Fionn informs Yifa and Mabel that Sika and Amy escaped safely, and the girls are really happy to learn that. When Sika and Amy reach the free city, they find Mabel and Yifa there, who have dropped out of the academy to be with them. As Yifa jumps to hug him, Sika realizes that the second phase of his second life is just starting.